Hi, this is Brett Schmidt from IBM, and today I'm going to show you how to format a Word document and then import that Word document into Doors Next. After we import the Word document, it's going to look something like this. And then I'll show you how to export this document as a PDF or a Word document. One thing I just want to call out before we hop over to the Word document is how we have this title right here. And if I click on this little twisty, everything below it collapsed. Coming down to the example header, if I click this little twisty, the section below that will collapse and so forth on. Taking a look at this example header too, we can see, hey, we have a table right here. If I want to collapse the table, I can do so. And that will collapse everything below it. And I'm just going to hop right into the Word document now and explain how that was able to be accomplished. Now, this is the Word document that I imported into Doors Next. And how I formatted this is I said my title was going to be classified as a heading one. Then for my example header one, I classify that as heading two. What Doors Next will automatically do is based on the heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, and so on, is I'll put it in a hierarchy. So what I mean by that is with the twisties, how everything collapsed below this heading one right here is because everything in this document is classified as something below heading one. So this example heading one is classified as a heading two. And this text right here is just classified as normal text. Same thing with these three bullets, that is normal text as well. Example header two was classified as heading two. The same thing as header one. So that way, header one has all of this inside of its own little twisty section inside of Doors Next. And then header two will have all this stuff below it inside of its own twisty section. And I'm going to explain what these characters are in just a second here. Finishing up with the headers, this example header 2.1 was classified as a heading three. So that way it would be below header two since it is header 2.1. That's going down a little bit. Example header 2.1.1 was classified as a heading four. And now hopping back over to Doris Next just to show you this, we can see that, hey, this example header one, that's classified as header two. So this puts it below the title that I classified as heading one. Then this example header two, I classify that as heading two in Word, and that also puts it below this. Scrolling down a little bit here, we have example header 2.1, and this is classified as heading three in Word, which puts it below example header two. And if I click on this twisty, we can see how this whole section collapses. Now I'll just expand that a little bit. And then this example header 2.1.1, this was classified as heading four instead of Word. And if I collapse this one, it only collapses its section below it. So this forms a sort of hierarchy based upon how you have your headers. Now let's talk about how I was able to have the image be imported with the example text, the table be imported with text, and also this chart right here with text as well. Hopping back over to Word, I use something called text delimiters. And what this is, is that using something between two characters, and the characters that I recommend for this are the greater than and less than symbols, and also the brackets, and finally the curly brackets. What you're going to want to do, now they can be any color you want to, I just made this one red right here to stand out a little bit more, but you put anything between these two characters and it will import whatever this is and classify it as what artifact type you want to. So just running through this Word document really quickly before we import this, make sure you have your headers set up properly. So heading one, down through all the way, heading five, then make sure you have everything classified as normal text, of what you actually want to import as text. And then for stuff you want to be imported as a group, I like to put special characters around it that will encompass the items themselves. So the greater than less than symbol for this image with the title, the brackets for the table with the title, and finally the graph with a description down below it between these curly brackets. Now to import this into doors next, I'm going to navigate to a folder and to create a folder, all you need to do is mouse over an existing folder click on the button that appears to the right hand side and click on create folder. Now it will create a folder nested underneath the folder that you have moused over and click that button for. Clicking on OK here, we are now inside of a new folder. Then I'm just going to click on create 
import artifact, import requirements from within a text document, and I'll click on next right there. Then I'm going to click on add files, and I will navigate to where the file is. Then I'll click on OK. Uh, make sure that this is a docx type or a similar type that can be read in. Then right here is that if I did not want to import it into the folder that I just created, that was example folder, I could click on browse and select a different folder from here. You can also directly create folders here as well. And then what you can do here is that if you want to import the requirements into a module, and what a module is, is that it is just another name for a document. You can leave this checked off as yes, that I want to import the requirements and create a module as well. So the name for the module, you can either use the source name for the document, but instead I'm just going to rename the module. And then the artifact type, if you use module, great, just leave this checked as is. But if you want to import it as a different type of module or some sort of custom artifact type, click on this drop down menu and you will be able to select that from here. So now I'm going to click on next. And all this information most likely won't be pre-populated. What it does is it remembered what you did for the prior import. So what I recommend doing, and this will change based on how your company likes to import things and classify things, is that I said, hey, anything that is classified as a header inside of that Word document, I want to read it in as a heading. And to find that, all you need to do is click on this drop down menu and select header from this list here. And then images, I classify it as a freeform diagram. And then coming down to this keyword section, what keywords are is that they will look for a certain word. It could be in a sentence, it could be in a paragraph, and it will take that whole block or sentence of text and import it as a certain kind of artifact. So what I did is I said, hey, I want to say that any text that has the word will in it, that is in a sentence, I'm going to import that as a system requirement. Anything that has shell in it, I'm going to import that as a sentence and call that a system requirement as well. Underneath match type, you have two options here. Now that's where you select sentence or paragraph, but underneath artifact type to create is where you will select the artifact type that you want to import. And if I just hop real quickly over to the Word document, the text that I have here, I have the word will inside of here, and I also have the word shall. Backing over to doors next, now down to text delimiters. These are the characters that encompass the table, the image, and also the chart as well. Anything between these two characters, you can import as a certain kind of artifact, whatever you classify that as. So I said anything between the two brackets, now that's a table in the Word document, is going to be supporting resource. Anything between the two brackets, now that's the image with the title, that is going to be a freeform diagram. And anything between the curly brackets, and that was the chart with description, that is going to be a freeform diagram as well. And all other text, I said, hey, that's just going to be a non-functional requirement. And typically, that could either be a supported resource or non-functional requirement or anything that your company likes to consider that as. And finally, once you have this all filled out, click on Next at the bottom here. It's going to go through and do an initial pass through the document and extract the requirements. And it's going to read you out a little menu here about, hey, this is what everything that was found. I recommend just glancing over this and if you see anything that might seem a little bit wrong, like maybe it said 100 non-functional requirements, well, I know I didn't format something correctly with the Word document if it's a page and a half. So I need to go back to the Word document and fix that. Now I'm just going to click on Finish. And it's going to run through the document again and actually import everything. Finally, once it's at 100%, I'm going to click on Close here. It's just going to refresh the page and then all I need to do is click on the name for this module that I just created and everything has been imported like it was inside of the Word document. And if you just want to see the artifact types that we classified everything as, click on this little drop down menu right here, and you can click on artifact type. We can resize this column up top here, and you can see all of these different artifact types that we classify this as. So now, how do we actually export this? And there's a couple different ways. If you want to export this as an Excel document, you need to save a view. And you can come over to this left hand corner here, click on save view, and I'm just going to put in as example view. And you can select if it's personal or shared. Uh, personal, this view will only be available for you, and shared, the view is available for the team. And what a view is, is that you customize this window here with a whole bunch of different attributes to get all these artifacts inside of here displayed in different ways. 
and to be able to export this in an Excel spreadsheet, all you need to do is mouse over the view options and you can click on export view. And here's where you can select if it's a CSV or a certain kind of Excel spreadsheet. And to export this as a Word document, you go up to the top right hand corner, click on the hamburger menu, and you can click on create and print PDF document or create and print Microsoft Word document. We are going to make a PDF document. And I'm just going to say, yep, I want to include the titles. And if you actually want to include the attributes, that is the artifact type column we just checked off. You can click on that as well. And you can also include call comments too. Now I'm just going to click on OK. It's going to go through and generate this document. Now scrolling through this document, we can see, hey, so this is the title for the module, who it was exported by. And when I scroll down here, we have a table of contents. Then we have all of the contents inside of this module itself. Thank you all for watching. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can find my contact information in the description below.